house itself is an artifact, and it's full of other artifacts from that time. It's like a time capsule. And when you open up a time capsule, you find out all kinds of interesting things that has happened in the past. The kids in, in Jenison have no idea how this place was founded or who the leaders were. And we're just trying to scratch and claw to hang on to some of the older buildings that are still around to give them a little piece of the history of it because, you know, I think it's important for the kids to know how the place was founded, who the, uh, the people were that founded it, and, and uh, the, the work involved in founding it, and the work that w the, the people around here did. My name is Gene Court. I am a trustee with the Jenison Historical Association here, and uh, normally when I have an open house, you'll find me up here in the attic. And I've been a member for about two years, but I was born and raised just down the street from here and uh, I can trace my family history back in Jenison, Georgetown area to 1864. Well, it became established in, in the 1830s and 40s with the, you know, it's, it's hard to you know, define what you mean established. There was people here, the Lowings and the Jenisons and, and the Boyntons and, and so on were the early ones. They came in the you know, 1830s and so on, but it really didn't get going good until they started the lumber boom, and that's when the Jenison really got going, and that was basically right after the Civil War. You had the blacksmith shop, you had a creamery, you had a hotel right along the railroad tracks, you had like a boarding house, which they called the brick block. It started out the, the, the small farms here, and, and when the kids got uh, working age, they would try and get into Grand Rapids, and there was a lot of commuting going on because the farms, there were really only three really big farms in the area after, you know, and so a lot of the people did commute back and forth to Grand Rapids, and then with the advent of the Ford Freeway 196, they really started coming in mass because they could go from here to almost to the other side of Grand Rapids in a half an hour. The industry that uh, was here, largely the sawmills, and, uh, you know, that, they were big, they, uh, it was a steam engine with, and a big sawmill. I would think that a notable building would be uh, the mill, which came down in 1964. That disappeared as well, and so a lot of the downtown area began to kind of dissolve, if you will. Um, today, there really isn't that much uh, there to remind us of that, uh, of that time. As far as Jenison proper, there's only two buildings left. The, the Tiffany House, because it was the proximity here to the freeway, the uh, Michigan State Highway Department used this as their field office when they were building this and for all their work that was done in between the building of the one towards Grand Rapids and one towards Holland, all the engineering was done, basically the field engineering was done here. And then it was, after that it was gonna be abandoned and removed because as anybody can see, the uh, on-ramp here is very, very close. Mm -hmm. Well, the state had every intention of tearing it down as soon as they were done with it. Uh, the citizens, especially Virginia Timmer, was very instrumental in spending a lot of time in Lansing and prodding the people of Georgetown, the, the supervisor and stuff, pressure Lansing into keeping this house and preserving it. And that's how we were able to preserve it through her efforts, to preserve it as basically a museum. And that's all it can be used for is a museum. They wanted to save this house from demolition uh, as it was going to be torn down to put on, uh, often on ramps for the, uh, the new section of the expressway. And I was a beginning teacher and knew that it would be interesting and credible to be involved in the local history here uh, and to get my students involved in that. And so I had a history professor who told me that uh, you know, you go through all of those classes and you learn a lot about history, but you, you really don't get a chance to use a lot of that knowledge once you're gone uh, into the work world. But here, I was able to apply some of that uh, in helping the group understand and interpret. It won't last forever, this particular place, but the history just keeps growing and uh, getting more dynamic. And while well, we're talking about the turn of the century, 1900, second turn that we've seen, the year 2000, uh, this house doesn't say anything about that. And 50 years from now, people want to know about that story too. 
So we have to be looking to the future. Uh, whether Jenison and Georgetown Township can support a big dynamic museum, uh, future will tell that. But right now, this is what we have, and we're trying to do the best we can with it. It's pretty well said. It's, it's going to be needing a paint job again before too much longer. And as opposed to going and removing things and putting vinyl siding on, that's not quite what we want to do because we want to keep it as original as possible. So it'll be painted, but, uh, but the windows have been replaced. You know, they got modern windows in here now, and, and it, it's, like I said before, if we can maintain it, it'll last a while. You got to look at it from the point of view that Mr. Henshaw was very wealthy at the time. He spared no expense. Everything was top notch, so it was built to last. And with maintenance, it'll last another 112, but it's got to be maintained. I mean, this old house is getting tired, and it's got to be, you know, it's got to be fixed up and hopefully it could last that long. When we're working here as a historical group, we sort of have to focus because we can't do everything, but there's a lot that could be done. I, you know, I would, like I said, I wish I would have started earlier because I just love it. I love when the school kids come. They, you know, they come up here and their eyes are big as saucers sometimes when they look around. You know, they think of, well, we're going up to the attic. Well, most people, they got like, a lot of the houses in this area are like three bedroom ranch houses. And they got just a little big crawl space for an attic, and they come up here and it's wow, all this up here. You know, it's just, those kids are exciting. To, I, I really love showing the kids around. It, they're just so excited and they got a lot of questions, so I love it. You see these things hanging here like this? There's also two here where she has to do the over and under on that. Wow. So she was here a long time. Yeah, big wheels are in the back. Big wheels are in the back. We need some younger volunteers to help us because a lot of these people on the committees, myself included, are getting older. And if we don't get some younger people in here, this place can't go on. And the, the, we need that. We really need that bad. If we had more people, we'd be able to open it more and, and give the, you know, spread out the workload, so to speak, uh, amongst the, uh, the other people. But we don't ask much time because we don't have to spend the time trying to make money. Your time is what you'd spend here for helping us with tours, and, and that's about it, really, as far as your time. We are now dressing in the Victorian clothing, which is something we didn't do in the past, and so it's kind of a new thing for us, and, uh, and that's a lot of fun. People seem to really appreciate that. The kids do, I know the kids do. Right now, what's, what's kind of fun about is uh, the grandkids are getting involved in it, and so that's, I think we're making memories with, with the grandkids as well. This place is really a labor of love. What we have here is just a small piece of uh, kind of like a, um, a symbol of Jenison history. I would hope that we would be able to display and, and tell the stories. And that's what we're collecting now are, are stories uh, about the past, about the past here and how people uh, lived and we would hope that we would be able to to continue that story. Would you say that preserving local history is important? Yeah, I would. Um, who we are as people and a nation, I would say we are defined by our history because we don't we don't know where we're gonna go without what we've already tried. There's no use in going over and being redundant with our actions. So I guess history and our local history keeps us where we are and helps us move towards the future. Yes, if, if, it's, if we don't have an opportunity to look back at where we came from, we, we lose a lot of who we are. Um, I feel it's, 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 more, it's just as important to look back at, where, at the past than it is to look forward to the future. Just us living in the present is very close-minded.